Hi, Jason Rulo here, one of your fellow world's toughest mudder competitors. As we get closer to the race, I see more and more stuff about gear, proper packing of your tent, proper wetsuits, all these type of things. What I don't see all too much of, which I have seen a little bit more today, uh, is nutrition information. People asking, what should I eat? And I'll tell you that the people that have not done this race before, I've done it two years, both uh, 2012 and 2013, those, that's where people fail. Ladies and gentlemen, 24 hours is a long time to go. And if you fail at your nutrition, you will fail at the race. That doesn't mean you're going you're gonna to wash out but it does mean that you're not going to perform at an optimal level. So nutrition has to be a real key. You've done all this time, spent all this time training and all this time getting mentally ready and being prepared for this event. And if you fail at your nutrition, you're going to bonk out. And that's the last thing we want to see. We want everybody out there properly hydrated, properly fueled and ready to roll because we are the best in the world at least at this type of a race, toughest in the world. And we want to see everybody out there competing at the highest level. So I'm going to give you what science tells you. Now, I will tell you a few anecdotal things about what I'm going to do, but I'm going to give you the generalized thing, what science says, and you can take it for what it's worth. Okay, implement it how you want. I'm not going to make too many recommendations on specific foods. You break it down how you want to break it down. You eat what you want to eat. If you feel like eating Pop-Tarts and Cadbury cream eggs, great. If you'd rather eat cake, be my guest. But know that everything is ba that I say is based on the science, and I'll give you the links below. Click on them. Check them out from the International Society, International so Society of Sports Medicine, Sports Nutrition, sorry. Um, they will have both position stand, two position stands on there, uh, and Gatorade Sports Science Institute to get a couple articles on there linked. Uh, these are all the references that I've used in the past. Uh, to get my information, and that's where all this information is coming from. So, okay, let's talk uh, carb loading, preparation for the race. Knowing that carb loading should not begin a day or two before the race, it should begin about five days before the race, you should be eating more carbohydrates. Uh, knowing that <clears throat> three days prior to the race, you should be taking in at least 30% more carbs than you normally would, and follow that up on day on two days before the race, about the same amount. And then the day before the race, that's about 60% over what you would normally take in. So you're taking in quite a bit more carbohydrates, about 12% more carbs per meal than you normally would, um, you know, even through the, the evening meal, whether you be at the Tough Mudder uh, dinner or the World's Toughest Mudder community dinner or whatever it is, know that it needs to be carb laden. However, also know that you need to be careful with the fat intake. If you eat too much fat the night before the race, you're going to spend the early part of the morning in the porta potty or in the bathroom at the hotel. You really don't want to have to do that. So be careful with the fat content. Don't go crazy there. Keep that at a moderate rate. But really, what's key with the world's toughest mutter, in my opinion, um, is fueling during the race. That morning of pretty important. You wake up three to four hours before the race. You want to make sure that you're taking in a good amount of carbohydrate. Science is showing about one gram per, of carbohydrate per pound body weight and uh, mixing that with protein of about a half gram of protein per pound body weight and uh, having that, like I said, three to four hours before the race. <clears throat> then as you get a little closer to the race, my opinion is I can't really, I'm going to be hungry as I'm starting the race, and I don't really want to be hungry as I'm starting the race, so I'm going to have a cliff bar or power bar approximately an hour before the race, depending on kind of how things work out. Usually, I'm just getting mentally prepared at that point so that I'm going to have something to eat, something small, uh, try to get ready for that initial lap. Now, during the race, understand, elite athletes are elite for one reason, or a few reasons in addition to their training, but one major reason is they have genetics that allow them to be so. So they may be able to get away with eating less. Ryan Adkins, Jun Young Pak, Amelia Boone, all these people can get away with probably eating less. My genetics, not that way. I need to eat a decent amount. So take all of this with a grain of salt. This is the generalized recommendation from the International Society of Sports Nutrition and Gatorade Sports Science Institute on what people need to take in. But during the race, science has shown you need to be eating something approximately every 30 minutes in order to keep that blood sugar up. Ladies and gentlemen, if you get hungry, if you get depleted, you have already failed. 
You need to be ahead of the curve. It's the same thing with dehydration. You cannot wait till you're already dehydrated to try to get rehydrated. That will end up, you will end up in the med tent before the end of the night. So the key is constant fueling. That doesn't mean you need to eat a lot, whether it be just a goo pack every 30 minutes. But the general recommendation is some type of nutrition, especially carb-laden nutrition, coming in about every 30 minutes. If you really start to feel like you're depleted, start taking something in every 15 but no, there is a terminal amount per hour that you can take in. Uh, the, the generalized number on that is if it's a single source carbohydrate, meaning you're not having a mixture of carbohydrates. Gatorade is a mixture of carbohydrates, but just say you're just eating fruit or you're just eating bread or something like that. You, you're going to have a maximal uptake of about 60 grams per hour, 60 grams of carbs per hour. Um, if you get a mixture, something like Gatorade, you're up to about 90 or 100 grams per hour. So for a generalized thing, you need to be doing at least 100 grams per lap, depending on how fast you're running laps. Throughout the middle of the night, you're going to be moving a lot slower, but you'll probably be burning less carbohydrate or less glycogen then. But no, at least 100 grams per lap. If you eat 100 grams during the lap or you know, 75 during the lap and then 75 between laps, that's fine. Uh, but know that the maximal uptake is about that. And if you can hit that, you're going to be doing okay. The long and short of this whole thing is the average runner is going to burn, if they go for the whole 24 hours, approximately 8,000 calories. 8,000 calories. That is a lot of food to be eating, so you don't want to have to leave it to chance that you're going to eat all of that between laps and then not get sick or not feel well during each lap. So it's, you're shooting for 100 grams of carbohydrates you know, per lap, roughly, as far as science is saying. Now. The other thing that science shows is that uh, between three to one and a four to one carb to protein ratio, uh, Pacific Health Labs makes Endurox R4. That is a four to one carb ratio. I take in the, their Excel gels. Those are also four to one carb ratio. So that's generally the number I try to shoot for. If that's the case, that means you're looking at 100 grams of carbohydrates per lap and 25 grams of protein per lap. Incidentally, that's about what's in my 50 fluid ounce uh, camelback. Now, during each lap, I only drink about half of that. So I drink about 25 ounces of that. And then I have other water source, you know, during, the, during each lap and whatnot. But that's about half of what I need. And I'm getting that during my, my actual race time because I'm taking that in off the camelback. So the overall, you're shooting for 100 grams per lap of carbohydrates and 25 grams of protein per lap. Um, so, like I said before, this is coming from Gatorade Sports Science Institute and International Society of Sports Nutrition, of which I'm going to link everything at the bottom below this video so you can, you can get all this information and read it about it ad, ad nauseum if you want. But knowing that you need to eat that amount of carbohydrates and that amount of protein, it's got to be a constantly sustained intake. You know, eating a certain amount, you, you, may not, you may not pit after every lap, but just know you're going to have to eat more if you stop after every other or whatnot. And be able to eat on the run is a, is a real key. But that is the generalized thing as far as what needs to be done, as far as a constantly sustained intake. Know that um, electrolytes are important. You may need to take Gatorade in. You may need to take in high-sodium type foods like lunch meats or... Um, you know, jerky or bacon or something like that to ensure that you're getting in all your, all your electrolytes. Uh, that is an important thing, especially since you're going to be in the desert. We want to make sure you're, you're well hydrated. Um, things that are on my list of things to get are all calorically dense, carbohydrate dense, low water, low fat foods. Those are things that work best for me during a race. It limits the amount of uh, times I have to go to the restroom and and whatnot. So taking off a wetsuit in the middle of the night is not a very you know, fun thing to do, and it's also not a very quick way to quit, finish laps. So things that are on my list are things like Pop-Tarts, you know, white bread, things that are easily absorbed, honey to put on the white bread, Subway sandwich, uh, you know, big 100. Medrex is probably going to be there with their big 100 bars. If you need something quick, you know, cut up a piece of that. That's going to be pretty good. Excel gels. You know, I'm going to have my jerky. I'll have some water in my tent. Um, you know, like I said, Gatorade and protein powder inside my pack. And, you know, a few other things like trail mix and, uh, you know, some pieces of fruit just for when I get hungry. But uh, you can have your comfort foods there too. But understand, 
limit the fat, high carbohydrate, you're going to need some protein and whatnot. And, and you want to continually, you know, eat all, all the way throughout the race. Side note, I'm going to mention caffeine because I want to pe- make sure that people understand caffeine is a drug and it has a limited effect after you take too much of it. So you want to take whatever you're used to, whatever amount of caffeine that you get in the morning when you need to wake up and you drink your coffee. If it's 200 milligrams, take 200 milligrams. Don't go way overboard. Just take a sustained amount. Caffeine has a half-life of six hours, meaning half of it, whatever you take, is in your system six hours after, after you take it. So it's total time to be all the way out of your system is 12 hours. But know that after three hours, approximately, you're going to feel pretty much none of what you took initially. So after three hours, you might need to take it again. My plan is only to take caffeine when I need it. I don't want to take it in and burn out all those, uh, all those good things in the brain, all the different uh, chemicals in the brain. And uh, then when I really need it in the middle of the night, I'm not, I don't have enough of them because I burned them all out earlier taking too much caffeine. It does, the body does have to replenish those chemicals. So knowing that, I'm going to limit it and limit the intake. However, all of those things, that's the science. You put it in play how you want. If you got questions, feel free to shoot questions, you know, post on this uh, video. Otherwise, race hard. We'll see you in Vegas.